from frogs to birds to tigers and some more woolly creatures. We've got a lot to talk about on this list today as we cover the top 10 terrifying creatures scientists want to bring back from extinction. Before we dive into this list today though, I just want to quickly give a shout out to today's video sponsor, Magellan TV. Magellan TV is a streaming service that is dedicated to documentaries and documentary series. Whatever your thing is, whether it's science, nature, history, true crime, or a good old docudrama, Magellan TV is sure to have it and they add new titles every single week. So there's always going to be something new for you to watch and add to your must watch list. One of the things I watched recently with my Magellan TV subscription and loved was Planet E, Fixing Earth from Your Backyard. This docu-series is one that takes a look at some really serious ecological issues and it focuses on people who are trying to change the world for the betterment of us all. You actually get to hear people telling their own stories and you get to see a ton of incredible animals and their ecosystems and their habitats that they live in and it deals with some really important subject matter that really all of us could benefit from. I honestly loved it and I binged it all last week. If you want to check out Magellan TV, which I know you do, today is your lucky day because Magellan TV has decided to give most amazing top 10 viewers a free one month trial to check out their amazing service and all you got to do is hit that link in the description box and head over there to start watching. It is for a limited time only though, so don't wait around, hit that link and enjoy. All right, on to our list. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Splendid Poison Frog. The Splendid Poison Frog is a species of poison dart frog that was once abundant and thriving and could be found in its habitat in western Panama. Researchers believed that a citrid fungus outbreak in their habitat led to a rapid decline of the species. In fact, this fungus is responsible for the deaths of a mass amount of amphibian species as the number of amphibians has been dropping at an alarming rate in the last few decades. Because of the fact that these were a species of frog that was once an extremely popular pet, it is thought that there might be unknown specimens which are still alive in captivity, but unfortunately none have been found in the wild and there aren't currently any that exist in zoos or research collections. The last time one of these frogs was recorded was in 1992. Their fungus outbreak occurred in 1996 and as of 2020 they have been listed as an extinct species. In our number 9 spot today we have the moa. These animals were giant flightless birds that could be found in New Zealand. They were so tall that they reached around 12 feet and they weighed more than 500 pounds. I'm just saying, there are smaller birds that exist today that are honestly pretty terrifying. A 12 foot tall 500 pound bird is actually a nightmare. While these guys had little predators before human settlement arrived, their populations quickly declined after they began being hunted by humans. It is said that actually within a hundred years of human settlement in the area, their extinction occurred. It is said that the moa have close relatives that still exist in South America and scientists are working to find a way to see if these relatives carry the moa gene and if so, could they be used to bring back this species of giant birds. In our number 8 spot today we have the western black rhinoceros. The western black rhino was a subspecies of black rhinoceros and they made their home in the savanna of sub-saharan Africa. These guys were unfortunately the victims of poaching which led to their rapid decline. Isn't it a bit ironic? People got so greedy trying to kill these incredible animals animals so that they could make money and now they can't make any money off of them because they killed them all. What a genius business plan and just genuinely good people. Anyways, this species first originated around 7 to 8 million years ago and for most of the 1900s it was the highest population of rhino species. That all changed however as from 1970 to 1992 the population of black rhinos in general decreased by 96%. Other than poachers, another main culprit for the decline was farmers who killed the animals to protect their crops that were placed close to rhino territories. The last sighting of a western black rhinoceros was in 2006 in Cameroon's northern province and sadly the subspecies was officially declared extinct in 2011. In our number 7 spot today we have the Caspian tiger. During their time on this planet, Caspian tigers were an animal that was native to eastern Turkey, northern Iran, Mesopotamia, the Caucasus around the Caspian Sea, central Asia to northern Afghanistan as well as in western China. They were everywhere. Until the middle ages these tigers could also be found in Ukraine and southern Russia but of course this is a list of extinct animals so what led to their extinction? Well it is believed that the demise of this tiger population started with the Russian colonization of Turkestan during the late 19th century. During this time the tigers were being killed by large parties of sportsmen as well as military personnel and they didn't just hunt the tigers but they also began hunting large numbers of the tigers main food source. This plus the fact that much of their home was being turned into agricultural cultural developments and you have 
a perfect recipe for causing the decline of a species. As of 2003, the species was officially declared extinct. Some scientists want to try to bring them back by introducing a very close relatives of these tigers into the lands that Caspian tigers once used to roam, where they expect it to adapt. In our number six spot today, we have the Morian viviparous tree snail. This was a species of air breathing tropical land snails that were endemic to French Polynesia. This extinction was caused by a chain of events that happened after something humans did. The African land snail was introduced into Tahiti in 1967 as a food source, but it quickly escaped and began to destroy crops. Biologists wanted to attempt to control the African land snail, so they decided to introduce the rosy wolf snail to the area in 1977. This went haywire as the rosy wolf snail didn't just control the population of African land snails, but rather started to eradicate all of the snails that were native to the area, which of course includes our little friend, the Morian viviparous tree snail. So this one little introduction led to them becoming totally extinct in the wild. These snails do still exist in captivity and there have been attempts to re-release them into the wild, but the rosy wolf snail continues to prey upon them. So at this point, it looks like they will never be able to return to the wild, which is very sad. It sucks that the intention really was to help, but things just did not go according to plan at all. In our number five spot today, we have aurochs. These guys are an extinct species of cattle, which are thought to be the ancestors of modern domestic cattle. These guys were absolutely massive. One of the largest herbivores that existed during the Holocene, actually. It is said that their populations began to decline during the late Holocene, which is due to habitat loss as well as hunting. It is believed that the last individual died in 1627 in a forest in Poland. Many of these creatures are believed to be depicted in cave paintings and even Bronze Age figurines. There are some modern cattle species that carry some auroch DNA, so there are certain teams of scientists who, since 2009, have been selectively breeding cattle in hopes of being able to bring back these long gone species. In our number four spot today, we have the woolly rhinoceros. We talked about another kind of rhino before, but now we have a woolly one. I didn't even know these ones used to exist. These guys were a species that was quite common in Europe and Asia during the Pleistocene epoch, and they survived up until the end of the last glacial period. These guys were an animal that is seen depicted in cave paintings as well, and we have even discovered their bones and remains that were mummified and preserved in permafrost. These guys were stocky and they had a thick woolly coat which helped them survive in the cold tundra environment. In 2020, there was actually one of the best preserved remains of one of these animals ever found, which has prompted questions about possibly reviving the species. In our number three spot today, we have the elephant bird. Apparently birds used to be massive because here we have another species of now extinct giant flightless birds. These guys are said to have once lived in Madagascar and it is thought that they went extinct somewhere around 1000 to 1200 AD, likely as a result of human activity. It is said that these guys stood to be about 10 feet tall and that they could reach insane weights of 730 kilograms, which would make them the world's heaviest bird. I'm just saying, I'm glad they were flightless. Several of the bones of these birds have been found with tool marks, which means that for years, these birds were able to coexist with humans. In the end, researchers are working to see if the remains we have found will be enough to possibly bring this species back into our modern world, and if so, what would the implications be? In our number two spot today, we have the Tasmanian tiger. These guys are actually less like tigers that we are used to, and they're actually marsupials, but not really like the marsupials we know today either. These guys are a carnivorous marsupial that was native to Australia mainland in the islands of Tasmania and New Guinea. These guys had anatomy and adaptations that bared similarities to both tigers and wolves, despite being unrelated. They were certainly an apex predator at their time, and as of now, their closest ancestors that are still surviving are the Tasmanian Devil and the Noombat. Because of these living relatives, it is thought that scientists might be able to bring back these creatures by selecting certain parts of their DNA. In our number one spot today, we have the Woolly Mammoth. We would certainly be missing a very important animal on this list today if we didn't include the Woolly Mammoth. These guys were of course a species of mammoth, and in fact, they were one of the last in line of mammoth species. Because of the fact that in both Alaska and Siberia, there were frozen carcasses discovered, 
discovered, they're actually one of the most well studied extinct creatures. Exactly why or how they were driven to extinction is widely debated, and another thing people like to debate is whether or not we should try and bring them back. There was a genome project completed in 2015, and since then it has been proposed that the species could be revived through a few different means, but no one has yet taken the leap. What do you guys think about reviving extinct animals? Are we on board? Are we terrified? Let me know down below in the comments. Thanks so much for checking out this video today, guys. That has been our list for today. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time. Bye. While these guys had little predators, what predators? Fucking, <laughs> like, what even does that mean? This, plus the fact that much of their home was being turned into agriculture. This, plus the fact that much of their home was being turned into agricultural. Agricultural. Why can't I say that? I'm from Saskatchewan. I know all about agricultural developments. Many of these creatures are believed to be depicted. I was like, for a second, my brain said, Decapitated. We have a woolly one. I didn't even know these used to. What the f? During the Pleis Pl Pl Pleistocene. And in fact, they were. What the f? Why can't I talk today?